So we're working on a heat pump here. Symptoms were it was giving a couple codes on the thermostat, which I can show you. You can see we've got definitely a low temperature situation here. Uh, that's sometimes normal to get frost on your compressor while it's in heating mode. If the loop field water coming in is really cold because you've already pulled a lot of heat from the system. The, the water heat exchanger back there also has some frost on it. Um, but when I fired this thing up, we didn't get any flow on our indicator. This metal weight in there should be getting bumped up to, I don't know, maybe somewhere right in here when this thing is running. We weren't getting anything. So I shut the unit off, did some investigating on the pump control. Seems like the start capacitor is fine in there, so I think that that's okay. Came over here and noticed that one of these seven amp pump circuit things was tripped. So I reset that. And now we're just waiting for it to come back on. I'm gonna have to go up and look at the thermostat again. This is the power going to the pump. right now we have no power going to the pump so we'll see when this thing kicks on what we get for power over there I think we're getting close to this thing coming on Turn the fan ramping up let's see what it does we got my meter on one wire going to the pump you can watch the amp draw I think we're just waiting for a delay that's built into this thing's control board. LEDs that are lit up are Y1, G, and Okay. 4.6. Yep, so that doesn't seem too crazy. I don't think we're getting our proper voltage to our pump. Oh, we're getting 241 volts. I can hear the pump's definitely running now. And we're not getting like any flow, so... We're either low on liquid or there's something wrong with the pump. Four amps on that wire. Three and a half amps on that wire. Water in. Water out. Both of these feel cold. Maybe it froze up in there, but either way, we're not getting any flow, so we've got to add liquid to the system or something. RPM, amps, three and a half, so max amp is 4.4. Does not seem to be moving water. Getting any flow? Give me a tiny bit. So I think our pump is still good. I lifted this up. This is the pack. It's basically a well pump. So I have this uh, well pump control. Um, but you can see down in there, there's hardly any water. So we're gonna go back and get some coolant mixture and get that dumped down in there. So that when we fire this thing up, it'll actually pump some liquid out to the loop field and then back. So I made a little sign. I'm going to put this on the system over there so that we always know what's in it. But basically this system has 25% propylene glycol from what I gathered talking to my dad. Uh, that gives us freeze protection down to 14 degrees. You always want to be 10 degrees lower than your expected uh, temperature for your loop field. 
In Minnesota, our anticipated temperature is 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's the temperature that they would ever expect that loop field to actually get down to. Um, so we're, we're, we're almost actually 16 degrees colder than that at the 25% mark. So we're going to be good there. And then it actually offers burst protection all the way down to negative 3, which is well below our anticipated uh, loop field temperature. So we're going to be plenty good with that 25%. Got a 4 gallon pail here that I've just marked some uh, lines on. So we'll add a gallon of propylene glycol and then we'll fill the rest up with water and that'll be our mixture that we're going to be adding. Obviously 25%, that's just going to be one to three parts one part propylene glycol to three parts water and yeah that should be good this box or this bucket here contains 100 percent propylene glycol so we just add it and add some water propylene glycol it's more yellow than i expected the water that you add to this you don't want it to be really hard uh probably best to use like uh soft water it doesn't have to be like reverse osmosis or anything like that but You just don't want it to be like really dirty and full of minerals. It's very important and nice to have a funnel for this situation. We're just gonna get this thing filled up, you know, somewhere in here. This is a small reservoir, uh, is what this is, and it's just depleted until the pump didn't really have any extra flux to push out into the loop field. Loop field could also be partly empty, so it might take more than the four gallons that we've mixed up, but I guess we'll see. Taken the temperature here before because there's already a piece of already a piece of electrical tape. But we're actually going to watch the amps first. When it kicks on, I want to see what that pump is doing, and then after that, we'll see what the temperature of the loop field is by measuring this water coming in. You can hear it ramping up. So take a look at our water. I filled this thing up right to the top. I'm expecting it'll suck down some. And then we'll have to add more. Well, it doesn't really look like it's sucking down a lot. I see some bubbles. Oh yeah, look at our flow. That's a very good sign. Getting a lot of flow. 4.5 amps, so it's on the higher side for that particular motor. Top of the compressor is not exactly getting super hot, so I think could be low on refrigerant. But let's see what that loop field temperature is. 37 degrees. That's the temperature of the soil out there. It's January. It's been in the negatives for some this week. Uh, today it was negative six when I got up this morning. Oh yeah, we're getting some heat here now. Earlier we weren't really getting any heat here because the system was running so cold that there wasn't really any refrigerant to hardly compress and put out as heat. So that was the problem. That pump had tripped because the loop field didn't have any liquid in it. You can see our liquid's yellow, so that's a little bit of dye from uh, whatever we'd added in here previously. And it looks like that's going to be plenty of water for the loop field. I'm actually surprised. I was kind of expecting that that would drop down some. We'll probably just leave this bucket here uh, so that we can add it in the event that it runs low again. You don't have to go back to the shop or anything. Carefully get this back down in place. And then I'll put this... Maybe I'll put this over here, actually. That way, everyone knows what's in it. Nobody has to guess. So, 
it's still five degrees above 30 out there that can get pulled out of the ground before it'll get to freezing even then it's protected all the way down to 14 so it would take a lot this thing would have to run a lot before it would start freezing and even then it would be protected from bursting all the way down to negative three so that's how you uh, mix propylene glycol for a heat pump system this is a unique system the way that you have to add is uh, not very user friendly a lot of them have like a valve you can just add water in directly and watch your level on your tube out there but the systems aren't really under pressure they just have liquid in them and it just pumps the liquid through um, and some of them like this one lose a little bit of liquid over the course of a couple years so you eventually end up having to add some but yeah I think that's gonna take care of it <laughs> yeah that's really hot now like I was saying earlier this was cold which made me go, oh no, it's low on refrigerant. But uh, that's actually not the case. It's just that the thing didn't have any heat because it couldn't evaporate the refrigerant because that heat exchanger back there, it's like a loop heat exchanger that this water goes through, was just too cold. I don't like putting my gauges on these because you have to reach so far in there. One time I took my low side gauge off and the Schrader valve got stuck in on this very system and I was like pretty sure I was gonna die because it was just whoosh, all the refrigerant was spraying out and I was trying to get the hose back on trying to get the, finally I grabbed I took the hose well the hose is already off I took a screwdriver and pushed the Schrader valve in a couple times and I got it to close again but I was like gonna get asphyxiated because it was like three minutes of it just whoosh, you know, basement and refrigerant's heavy, so it kind of sits low. So let's just say after that happened, I got out of here for a little while and let it kind of dissipate, opened up that window over there, um, and then added refrigerant back in. But it's a bummer when those little valves don't don't uh, work properly. So yeah, I prefer to not put my gauges on this unless I absolutely have to. But yeah, looks like uh, we got this one taken care of. Just uh, low water in the loop field. So yeah, you can see the compressor's warmed up considerably. Now there's no frost on it. And the air to water, or the water heat exchanger back there is slowly melting off too. And we've got nice heat on the line set, or on that coil up here. Actually replaced this coil at one point. Link in the description to that video if you want to see that. Um, but yeah, looks like we're good to go.